today's adventure is we're going to go see Guopé Couture Fantasy. It's a um, pretty exciting clothing display at the Legion of Honor, which is out on the Presidio, out on the big park that's at the edge of San Francisco.
So a wrap up to the Guo Pei video. Um, you pretty much just saw video footage interspersed with slideshows, mostly because it was crowded. It was really crowded at that museum. If you get the chance to go, go, hands down. It is excellent. But it was really interesting to talk to my friend and then to go and see her view as a sort of a non-sewer and how impressed she was with the sheer hours it took to make those things. And then my point of view as a budding historic costumer and to understand the difference between now and then in, um, cost in dressmaking and haute couture. Because I don't think my friend really knows haute couture and understands the sheer volume of hours that go into any haute couture garment, especially if you have the powerhouse that this designer clearly has in China. So those garments, if you saw them, they are embellished out the backside. 50,000 hours of time spent on a single dress. Beautiful, gorgeous. And um, they're basically equivalent to, I don't know if you've seen the peacock dress. I'll put a link in the comments below of, or in the info below. But the peacock dress has taken and is taking hours and hours. And the only way to get all that embroidery done in anybody's lifetime is to send it out and have it done in a third world country where labor is cheap and you can put a team of 50 people on it, which I am sure Guo Pei is doing that. She works in a, her, I think her husband owns a garment factory. <coughs> now what is cool is, is that she's one of very few um, high-end fashion designers in coming out of China and um, the history behind it because because she was born during the, the Cultural Revolution and Mao Zedong, um, she, it was very frowned upon to do any embellishment in your clothing because the arts were being suppressed at that point. Um, I, we have a good friend who was raised in China and is about my age, a little younger than me, but around my age. I think Guo Pei was born in 1968, so she's four years younger than I am. But he was raised in a house where um, he ended up living with a music professor and his three kids. And um, they did music in the home, but the music professor lost his job at the university because music was not valued. It was work applied, um, work training, um, mathematics, science, those sorts of topics were encouraged and the arts were very much discouraged. I assume because they were a waste of time and that work was what they were supposed to be doing in the Mao Zedong years. But after him, um, and I'll type in the uh, next um, the next leader's name here. I used to know it too, dang it. Um, I can't come up with it now. It's still daytime. I, my brain comes alive at night. Um, he opened up some of the arts back up and that is why Guo Pei is allowed to do such creative endeavors is because the next prime minister of China was open to some of those arts returning and um, so the garment industry has grown and you know you can find people to do beading and embellishing and crystals and things like that on your garments and then of course Guo Pei being married to a guy in the garment industry has more access than your average bear, but also not to under give her credit, not to devalue the credit of her creativity because those garments are flipping amazing. Her creativity and the way she put things together, she really thought outside the box, but in a very beautiful way. Um, my favorite dress was, uh, well, my favorite part of the exhibit was not the actual exhibit that we paid for to go downstairs. But what they did is in the upstairs part of the museum, they interspersed garments amongst the artwork and they did a stupendous job putting a dress into a room that really meshed with that room. So like there were the black and white dresses, those were in a room with Spanish art and near Spanish art. Um, there was a, um, a, a, like a little closet with some beautiful furniture in it. And the dress that was in there went, sort of had this French flair. 
And then there was a big, like a drawing room with some beautiful furniture in it. And my favorite dress of all that was out of a silk that shimmered in two different colors. Um, and I, if you've watched this video, I put my favorite dress in little words up at the top. Um, and probably hard to catch on camera. I tried to angle the camera so that you could see the color differential, but I'm not sure I pulled it off. Um, but that was super pretty, that dress. And not as much embellishment as some of the other ones. And then finally, at the end, if you see that gold, like, birdcage looking skirt that's oval or elongated, I've put a link below of what that walked like on the runway, and it was not easy. I've also put some other videos with Guo Pei's dresses on the runway. It's crazy, but, like, you look at all those dresses, and I wasn't the only one going, geez, I wonder how they pulled that off on the runway, because... Everybody around me said the same thing. I'm like, I don't know how that would work on the runway. I don't know how that would work on the runway. <coughs> and you know, the runway is just like a walk straight. It's not actually wearing it to an event. Now, Guo Pei did a dress for the, um, Rihanna wore it to the Met Gala, and they call it the omelet dress. So you can do a search for the omelet dress, but I've also put a link to that dress below so that you can see what that looked like. And I listened to an interview with her a few days ago about what it was like to wear that omelet dress. And I guess she had to put the dress in the limo, and it was a stretch limo. She had to get in in her undergarments, which she did not comment on exactly what garments she wore. And then she had to get dressed in the limo into the dress. And then have her five friends, who were also in the limo with her, help her get out and wrangle that giant dress out to go into the Met Gala. So, and I, again, link below. So, lots of links on this one, but it's worth it. Gopay is very interesting to read about, and the dresses are spectacular. Um, the 50,000 hours is, um, I did calculate. I think one of those dresses would have taken me, if I'd worked on my own, 10 years, full time, to put all the embellishment on. So, 10 years of work. That's craziness. But, when you've got you know, 50 people working on it, onto each individual piece, a 10-year project is squeezed down to a much shorter period. So, math, it's fun. Okay, that's it for me today. This is going to be a long video. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Let me know if you think I should have broken it into two pieces. Um, if you like the video, subscribe, ring the bell so that you get notified when new videos go up. Kelly and I have a great time. I love the travel gig. I love to travel. You, you have to realize that. And then um, Kelly's got tutorials going up. She's got book tucks going up. She's got her garden. She just got a new duck house. So that's going to be probably a tour coming your way. Um, and then I've got my house I'm working on. Plus, you know, the main stuff. Tutorials on knitting. Which, I've got one of those coming too. I've been embroidering the last couple of days. So, i got videos coming. And the Norwegian ones aren't even up yet. Because I've got to do some of this stuff for that. All right, I will see you in a couple of days, and um, I'm going to wrap up, rack up two videos today, so I can guarantee you, you will be getting one on Sunday. Bye!